As if the last few weeks of controversy haven't been about battle ratings and game balance isn't enough, they recently put out a developer Q&A stating that, uh, well, Germany will be getting F4s and that aircraft, particularly pertaining to swing wing aircraft, would be coming to War Thunder soon. When pressured on the matter, the community manager Smitten 1080p said, could we see Swing Wing next patch? And he, to his reply, we never denied it, we just don't expect to see the big boys like MiG-23, Tornado or F-14 right away. It could be interesting because this feature could be essentially the same as a VTOL aircraft and how useless they are in certain instances. Now, variable sweep wing probably be interesting to add, but the mechanics of such would be convoluted. But first, we must define what swing wing is. It's an airplane or wing or set of wings that may be swept back and then returned to its original strike position during flight. It allows the aircraft shape to be modified in flight and is therefore an example of variable uh, geometry in aircraft. I think I just had a stroke trying to pronounce a variable, but anyway. The answers from the developers were a bit vague, as they usually are. Germany will be getting its F4, which is fantastic to see. Same with the Sea Harriers as well, if you wanted those kind of things. Now, the big question on the main stat board was, will we see Swing Wing aircraft in War Thunder soon? And the answer to that one was just yes. Not what is it, or how is it, or what componentry or what types of aircraft it was just a single yes so speculation what could we possibly have in terms of swing wing aircraft for fighters it's f-14 mig-23 the tornado the f-11b fighter bombers multi-role sort of stuff su-17 20 22 the tornado ids and the ecr the f-11 uh, f-111 a c and f Attackers, you've got the MiG-27 and the Su-24. Strategic bombers, you've got the FB-111A, the B-1B Lancer, you've got the Tu-160 and the Tu-22M. Discussion starts on strategic bombers has been a bit lacklustre. There are quite a few Cold War aircraft we're actually missing in War Thunder. So you, you can expect that strategic bombers are completely crossed off the list. While it would be fantastic to have Vulcan and maybe T-95 and B-52 in the game, their usefulness on the battlefield is questionable at most. Practically all swing wing aircraft are military and they're designed and implemented during a period where the jet engines could not give sustained supersonic performance due to either being turbojet design or low bypass ratio insufficient to permit high efficiency across the entire flight spectrum. Given that, Early swing wing jets were descendant of wartime German Messerschmitt P1101, uh, which was able to have its wings set before a mission. But the Bell X5 was the first swing wing jet that com well, was a completed example able to swing its wings in flight. And it was complicated though, as the center section of the wing moved forwards and backwards as the wing moved through a sweep angle to preserve in flight stability. So while the aircraft did fly well, it didn't really have the same performance as the in-service F-86 Sabre and the forthcoming F-86D Sabre Dog, not to mention the Mark II F-100 Super Sabre and the other high-performance projects that were in the works in the late 50s. One other type which did fly with its wing design was the Grumman XF-10 Jaguar, and it was awful, but not due to the swing wing, rather it was due to every last system on the plane being horribly underwhelming. The Westinghouse XJ40 powering the plane was under thrust with a dodgy engine uh, control and electronic system thanks to incredibly sloppy manufacturer. The tailplane design was useless and Grumman's set of fixes beggar belief, you know. The XF10F was never really proceeded with, but for better or worse, it's the ancestor of its illustrious descendant, the F14 Tomcat. Obviously, the first VG type was of course the F111. And all subsequent types of it are really its descendant, and NASA worked out that with a fixed wing selection that allows the center of pressure to move around during wing swinging, made it possible to have and eat the cake at the same time. Excellent efficiency, low landing speed, coupled with efficient high speed dash performance at supersonic speeds. And all other supersonic swing wing jet types owe their configuration to at least looking like and performing like the F-111. In all my time working on aircraft and being an aircraft maintenance engineer when I worked for Jetstar and Qantas at Tullamarine, I never really understood variable geometry. It wasn't something that they really taught us. 
had I had gone on to do my licensed aircraft maintenance engineering trade or gone on to get further qualifications, I might have, or had I had studied aviation engineering more profusely, maybe it would be a better thing to understand how it would relate to War Thunder. But speaking of War Thunder, it's going to be particularly interesting. You'd think that Gaussian would have melted with how much salt there is in the community about the battle rating compression issues and, and so on and so forth of the recent times. And my only reasoning for the reason why they did this change was due to the compression and, and reasoning for that is for introducing the new things that are going to come out in the next coming patches in March, in June, etc, etc. They just don't care. The classic add new things at the exact same battle rating. If you look at it from one perspective, the new battle rating changes are decompression, just decompression downwards instead of upwards, which is what the community has been asking for for years. But it's going to be particularly interesting to see how they add these particular vehicles too. What's coming first? Are they going to ruin the top tier jets again like they did with VTOL aircraft? It's more a balancing act here, because in War Thunder I expect the swing wing action to be automatically controlled, as normally it'd be set up by computer control, assuming that the above is correct. In real life combat, most variable geometry wings that I'm aware of are set to gradually adjust their wing sweep from full forward at corner, uh, well, at a decent speed, to below full uh, rearward uh, Mark 1 and faster. I, I I'd expect that's how they would be represented by in game as well. But a toggleable feature that would allow manual control, like for example flaps, would probably be the best option in hindsight, although a lot of the Russian aircraft that are swing wing are purely manual, whereas a lot of some of the American aircraft, for example, are automatic to a degree. And it's really fascinating. Looking at the future of War Thunder, it's quite clear the direction that they want to take. Swing wing aircraft, rank 7 aircraft, A-10, Su-25, MiG-23. There, there are quite some telling signs if you look part back onto some of its posts in and what they do and sort of how they feature or do certain changes. It makes sense. But are they going to do what they did with the F-4 Phantom where they add a vehicle in specifically just to leapfrog technology and then add redundant other technology, for example F-84F, uh, and at a, at a later date or three years too late? You know, there's all these kind of questions here and I guess it doesn't really play well with me too much. I guess the problem with swing wings is more the aircraft capability and the platforms that those missiles and, you know, the armor presets that those aircraft tend to bring with it. My biggest issue here is you've got an arsenal of weapons, a different type and a different strategic outlook on the way that the game plays. Will it change rank 7? No, not really. The gameplay will probably be similar. Will swing wings have an effect on top tier? Probably not, but maybe in terms of what the ordnance those loadouts could carry. My biggest issue with War Thunder is the fact that they continually add technology that leapfrogs and then dominates top tier at that particular time of introduction. Look at the MiG-19 PT and the F-100. While the advent of those supersonics were fantastic and everybody loved that, the reception from the community wasn't really exactly ecstatic either, but they were both balanced and in low speed the Sabres could basically kill the F-100s, and they certainly could kill the MiG-19. wasn't necessarily an issue. But now, there are more balance and concern issues with the advent of more vehicles just because Galgen can't, or they won't necessarily address some of the core issues that already exist. They primarily focus on adding a content, and that's fine. But when you neglect older types of vehicles and older content, that doesn't help anyone and doesn't really give anyone an incentive to play those lower tier vehicles. There is no incentive for you to go and play those lower tier jets. Unless you are particularly grinding for something, or you plan on spading a tech tree, or playing those vehicles because it's your favourite vehicle. There's no reason for you to go back and play those lower tiers, because there's always an incentive to go grab the next thing, and the next thing. And we're chasing this ever-ending arching goal to achieve, what, balance? Domination? Of course it brings up more questions than it also answers. Beyond visual range missiles. Obviously stuff with the big 23, with the R23s and the R24s. Obviously stuff with the, uh, what are they called? The AIM-9s and obviously the uh, AMRAMs, for example. Or maybe even ECM. But War Thunder will require extreme redesign of air maps and air combat in general to start using this game as more of a platform for justification to use some of the missile systems and things you see uh, in later tier jets. 
Are we ready for Swing Wing Jets and War Thunder? The answer is no. But unfortunately, we don't necessarily decide that. It'll probably be here sometime this year. Anyway, my name is Ash, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.